what a fantastic panel, guys, and what a beautiful thought there at the end, thought by uh, uh, Vaughan Roswell, where he says, the ability to take a piece of our imagination, an idea, and turn it into something tangible. And that's the beauty of business. That's what business is all about. Okay, you are in for a treat. We're about to hear from one of the most eminent CTOs in the world, and he's going to talk to us about mass migration. When I talk about mass migration, I'm not just talking about data. I'm talking about companies taking their whole IT portfolios and moving them over onto one platform. And in this case, that eminent platform is AWS. And remember, the company that generates more SaaS revenue on the planet today is Amazon. AWS. They generate more than Salesforce.com. Not a pure play like Salesforce, but they generate more, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal achievement. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Amazon's Chief Technology Officer, the astounding Werner Vogels. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, yeah, sort of. Um, so most of you know cloud computing out of the world of the startups, of course, hey, that's why we're all here. Um, and many startups have just the advantage that they have a greenfield. They can start from scratch. Uh, and what we see, given that this is, a, this is the room where we talk about enterprise computing and enterprise systems, uh, many enterprises have taken the step that they have a cloud-first strategy. And that means that Cloud first means that all new development goes into the cloud. Yeah, nobody, it's a very hard conversation to have if you see CFO, if you actually want to buy more hardware to build your new systems. Yeah, that, that's just not happening. And for many organizations, they have already thousands of applications running in their own data centers. So what are they doing with that? What are sort of the motivations behind moving those applications over to, um, to AWS? And what, uh, and what are, the motive, what are the different patterns that we're seeing with those companies that are doing this? And mass migration really means basically emptying out your complete data center or multiple data centers and move them over to AWS. A company like General Electric has decided that they are going to close 30 of their 34 data centers. Yeah? What are the patterns that we see with those kind of applications in their world? Um, to, uh, to, to move over to the cloud? What are the kind of challenges that you have? Um, I'll go pretty quickly through it. It's, uh, there's a lot of um, stuff to cover. Um, if you look at sort of the, the drivers for why uh, companies are actually migrating over, I'll go into a bit more detail. Uh, often it is the first driver is either cost or agility and sort of uh, developer productivity. Um, it might be that you want to consolidate your data centers. Yeah, that's a process that in many organizations has been going on for a long time. Um, many enterprises are talking today about digital transformation, no longer wanting to be the sort of the paper pushing company and really be able to sort of compete with younger businesses that are all digital. And so there's a whole range of different drivers around why companies may decide to uh, move their existing applications over to the cloud. Yeah, and this, in AWS, we give all sorts of support for it. We, we have a whole methodology. There's partners, there's tools. Um, uh, we have professional services ourselves. Um, and so there's many of the support that we give there. We even help them with through investment sometimes to move over their applications. Um, but, but the more interesting thing is, what are the kind of things that we see? Uh, and so News Corp um, bringing uh, 56 of the data centers down to six. Uh, across the world. Why, why do they have 56 data centers? Because News Corp grew through for, for mergers and acquisitions. And with each of those acquisitions came uh, new compute capabilities. And they were really aggressive in growing their business. And they such got stock with a very large number of data centers around the world. Uh, so for them, data center consolidation is a really important driver for them. Uh, ML, large uh, energy company out of, um, out of Europe and in uh, South America, they, um, they really drove all the migration, mostly to trigger better agility and better developer productivity. Um, I talked about GE already, about it. 
Much of that is digital transformation driven because they really want to become a company that is much more analytic and much more data driven than that they were in the past and so need to prepare for that one. And so this is all sorts of different reasons why companies go through this migration path and I hope that I can uh, show you some of those. Uh, Hess was another uh, interesting example. They wanted to sell off a part of their business. And uh, to be able to sell off that part of the business, they basically had to empty half of their data centers um, because otherwise they couldn't go through the sale of their, that part of their business. So they moved it over to AWS and then sold basically that business um, to someone else. So if you look at sort of what are the different steps when companies go through migration, um, first and foremost, you need to figure out why are you doing this? What are some of the drivers, the business drivers for going through a migration process? Next step then often is once you figure out why you want to do this, is to figure out what do I have? Turns out that's a much harder process than that you think. But as you can imagine, a, an organization like News Corp with these 56 data centers, there's a lot of things in their data centers that they actually don't really know and don't really know what kind of the dependencies are uh, uh, between the different uh, components. Um, and then how do you migrate and how do you um, how do you optimize after that well, once you've done it? Of course, the most important thing is for most enterprises to figure out why do we want to do this? And if you look at sort of the different type of, uh, of reasons, first and foremost, often operational cost comes in there. One of the capabilities that cloud gives you, of course, is to have elasticity, things that you would never have in your own data centers. Basically, uh, um, the ability to shed capacity when you don't need it. And to grow, of course, when you need more, I mean, the scalability part is important, but often from a cost perspective, the ability to no longer have capabilities on your books, even if it's for a few hours, is a big deal for many companies. So operational cost, workforce productivity, we easily see at our customers a two to three X productivity improvement of, uh, of customers that have moved, for example, their dev and test systems over to the cloud. Um, many of our customers have, um, are on a hardware refresh cycle. And, and that basically means that sort of after a number of years, they just have to refresh the whole hardware base. Um, that's something you really want to get away from. Um, uh, whether you do that on lease or whether you actually have bought the hardware, it's a different thing, but in most of these cases, that's a driver. Um, the ability to actually build more reliable systems. And for many, many companies, the case is that they weren't able to have multiple data centers and then capabilities over these multiple data centers to build highly reliable systems in the cloud. That's something that comes for free almost. Um, of course, being able to move faster is a driver for many companies. And at this moment, one of the most important drivers for companies to start migrating their systems over to the cloud is security. The kind of investments that we can make at Amazon and at AWS is unparalleled in terms of security. And many, many even the largest uh, organizations in the world are able to not make the same kind of investments when it comes to people, when it comes to uh, innovation in operations, when it comes to building new tools. The kind of things, security you get in the cloud is something that no on-premise environment ever has had, especially when it comes to um, automation. And of course it is that not one of these reasons is, is the sole reason why companies are mi migrating. Uh, this is the example of GE oil, oil and gas. Uh, they basically on quite a few of these different pillars um, are drivers for them why and how to operate. These things are important because they may help you make decisions in, uh, in processes later. Yeah, then you get through the whole uh, trying to figure out how to actually do this migration. And, to, and for that, uh, it's, it, it's, there's a whole set of tools, both built by AWS as well as our partners, that can sort of go through your data centers and then try and find um, sort of dependencies, what are the kind of things that are easy to move. Yeah, like, like in the case of uh, GE, they had a number of applications that were maybe used by two or three or five users. Other applications were used by 25,000 users. Yeah, so each of those have sort of different requirements about how to migrate them. And so there's all these tools that are, that are available to sort of discover the kind of things that you have and how you may be able to migrate it. Um, this is actually the interesting thing. If you look at sort of the patterns that we found, uh, how these migrations are happening, um, 
first and foremost is this sort of discovery phase, and then you're going to make decisions about how to migrate this application. Uh, first, there is sort of what we call rehosting, basically lift and shift, basically taking the applications as it were in your own data centers and moving them over to AWS. Uh, it might be easy if you're really running VMware, for example, to sort of uh, VMware on AWS allows you to transparently move these applications over. But already, if you sort of fall into the category that you're running it on Linux or you're running it on Windows, then you may actually be lifting, shifting it. Most of these applications, however, do not get things like extra scalability or extra resilience, uh, because if they weren't scaling, if they weren't resilient in your own data centers, they're not going to be resilient in the cloud either. And so given that host lift and shift is a pretty popular way of actually starting to migrate to the cloud, what you want is to do to automate these. You have to have actually automating tools to actually move your applications over. If you need to move 4,000 applications, you don't want to do this by, by hand. You really want to uh, find automated patterns. You may start off with a manual install, but then sort of learn from those processes to start building automations in there. The second pattern is that of replatforming. If you were running on uh, an AS400 or uh, if you were running on an old version of Solaris, you may actually have to do a bit of work to actually get your applications over. It, um, and the, you may find new libraries, you might actually develop some new code to be able to move them over. Next pattern is repurchasing. For quite a few of our customers who are running uh, software Existing software on-premise, for example, your CRM system or your HR systems, uh, a decision that you might make, want to make when you start migrating to the cloud is to actually dump the software that you had and to actually go with software as a service in the cloud instead of continuing to run your own software. And whether you go with Salesforce or Infor or whoever is the, the large Workday, all these large uh, software as a service companies uh, may actually give you solutions that you no longer have to manage yourself uh, if you're running on premise. And then there is the, the pattern of re architecting. And this is actually one that I most like because it means that actually you're taking your applications and moving them over to the cloud and making them cloud native meaning that they can exploit elasticity, meaning that they can uh, exploit multiple data centers, that they can start exploiting different types of databases to use. Um, and this is something where most of our customers would like to be. However, sometimes urgency might give them that they want to do rehosting first, moving applications over before they start to work on re-architecting. Uh, so there may be all sorts of drivers do you do re-architecting first and then move it to the cloud, or do you do re-hosting first and then start to re-architect? And then there's two other R's left. One of them is retire, like we don't need this software anymore because apparently nobody's using it. Um, and then maybe you want to keep some things on premise. And then that's not such a weird actually pattern, keeping it on on-premise, and maybe that you've developed things for very specific hardware and that only by sort of building the next generation of something is something that you'd want to do in the cloud. Now, if that is still running on uh, an old IBM mainframe, it might be much harder to actually migrate these things over to the cloud. You may want to go with the next generation of the software instead of, um, instead of trying to do the big effort of uh, moving them. Yeah, and uh, each of those is different in terms of com complexity. Uh, we're you running on Java? Uh, were you Java applications or were you sort of hardcore low-level applications that only will work on an AS400 system? Lots of tools we give you there. Uh, we use, for example, the uh, AWS Database Migration Service. Uh, that's a service that automatically moves your data over from your databases on-premise into the cloud. Uh, since the launch in two years ago of this service, we've migrated over 80,000 databases. Uh, into the cloud in an automated fashion. They do schema translation, things like that. And then unless you've done really weird things with, let's say, stored procedures in your databases, this can do much of the automation for you. Lots of tools, of course. You live in a world, uh, often if you do migrations, where you live in both worlds, both on-premise and into the cloud. So there's all these tools that we built for you to help you live in this world together um, without actually having to give up on one or the other. And so while you're migrating, that might actually be a process that will take a year or maybe more 
So in, the, in that time, you have to live in both worlds together. So you can make sure we make sure that both data centers and the cloud world are actually working really well together. Um, if you actually want to learn more about this, we have a whole set of the sort of stories for you. If you want to learn more about what sort of the, uh, the, the patterns are in terms of enterprise migration, uh, sort of adoption patterns, but also sort of uh, advice that we give to our enterprise customers about how they are migrating into the cloud. Um, I only had 15 minutes, so I hope that I informed you somewhat about mass migrations. Hope to see you soon. Bye.